So evidently, if you decide to seriously build amazing physique and you really want to get good grades, there's really going to be like a conflict there. Shoulders to be really, really energy draining. If you're not giving your body proper rest, your body's honestly going to kick you right in the dick. That was kombucha. So this video is gonna be centered around whether pursuing bodybuilding and engineering, if pursuing those two things, whether it's maintainable or not. And we're just really gonna discuss the uh, feasibility of pursuing bodybuilding and getting an engineering degree. We're also gonna talk about the expectation, ugh, the expectations you should have for yourself if you are majoring in STEM and want to seriously uh, build your physique, do bodybuilding. So I just wanna throw this out there. I know a lot of engineers, not only engineers, a lot of other students that do go to the gym and they do work out, right? But they really don't get any progress. They're just casual lifters, you know? So this video, like it, I know, like you can work out, you can get an engineering degree while going to the gym. Like you can definitely block out time for that. I'm talking about what exactly is required in order for you to do well and get an engineering degree while having a really, really insane physique. So anyway, let's jump right in this video and let's discuss what exactly getting a physique like this, what exactly it requires in regards to your time. So number one is sleep. So you're gonna have to sleep when you are working out pretty intensely, like at minimum, eight to nine hours a night. In college, you like to think that you're a superhero. I kind of thought the same way. I was sometimes sleeping like five, six hours a night. Maybe thinking like, why exactly do I need sleep? But not getting enough sleep will definitely hurt you seriously, not only in the short term with your memorization and you know your digit span and whatnot, but also really impact you in the long term as well. And I really suffered the consequences of not sleeping enough. I'll probably go into it later in this video about how exactly my sleep schedule impacted my performance, uh, not only academically, but physically. But let's move on to the next thing on the list, nutrition. So nutrition, your nutrition protocol is definitely going to vary a little bit depending on your energy expenditure, which is gonna vary based on how many times a week you're working out. <clears throat> Yeah, sorry my mic ran out of batteries here. Anyway, in regards to nutrition, so I was eating three meals a day plus snacks. Usually my first meal will be at 12 p.m., another at like five, another at 9 p.m., and I was having snacks in between. So making sure I got enough food was really important. So sometimes I'd actually stay up super late, like until, you know, 12 or 1 a.m., making sure I hit my macronutrient goals. But in hindsight, this is actually a pretty bad idea because it kind of screws you up the next day. Your mind up because you're staying up super late. You're going to be super exhausted. You're not going to perform as well the next day. So don't do this. So I hated meal prepping for the week. So I usually just wake up super early and make all of my food in the morning. Usually pack, you know, apples, rice, chicken, peanut butter. Maybe had a few cookies, you know, or something like that, right? So waking up early and planning really does take time. But planning on how you're going to hit or be in the range for your macronutrients for the day is really important. So plan on setting aside at least 30 minutes to an hour in the morning to prep for this. So the third thing I want to talk about that does require your time besides, you know, coordinating your sleep schedule and your nutrition would be the intensity of your workouts. And this is along with your nutrition. This is probably the most important, I would say, one of the most important aspects of creating an amazing physique. When I had these bodybuilding pictures, when I had these pictures taken, I was working out five to six times a week. This was honestly a pretty rough time cutting down for these Photos, when you are cutting, I use a you know a keto diet to do that, you are gonna get pretty mentally fatigued. Like I was uh, not only doing, you know, not only doing a uh, academics when some of these pictures were taken, but I was working as well. Like at my job, I mentally just sometimes was not there. So that's just the sacrifice you pay for when you are competing and uh, working and doing school. So you need to work out intensely a minimum of four times a week. That's just probably the, maybe three, but that's basically four, I believe, is the, the minimum days you should be in the gym physically applying yourself. And not only should you be actually in the gym working out, you should be intensely pushing yourself. And every single workout, you're gonna try to hit some type of PR, again, uh, progressive overload. You're gonna try to do more 
reps at the same weight. You're gonna try more weight, you're gonna try more volume. Every single time you're in the gym, you're going for some type of little, little increment. You're going for a little bit better than you were last time. So that interest compounds upon itself and gradually over time, you'll be able to build something truly extraordinary. But the fatigue that you get from some of these workouts, like I was really stupid in this regard. Sometimes what I would do is I would do a really intense heavy squat workout and I'd have like a systems dynamics analysis test the next morning. So I would sleep like, go home, super fatigued. Like after you've done six, seven, eight squats or, or six, seven, eight sets of squats, you, you really don't wanna do anything else. So I was just physically super pushing myself. I would wake up early next day, do my homework, take the exam. And sometimes, honestly, I would know material, but I used to be so tired from physically pushing myself and not getting the right amount of sleep that I would just perform, sometimes not even at a mediocre level. Sometimes I would do poorly on tests. And honestly, getting your degree, those grades are fairly important, especially if you wanna to go to grad school. So avoiding super intense workouts before important academic events is really essential. So I found the following two workouts the most taxing for me, at least mentally draining. I found squatting, so leg day, heavy, heavy legs and shoulders to be the most exhausting. So your legs are the largest muscle group in your entire body. If you're gonna work those out really intensely, it's really gonna tax your energy system. Uh, I found shoulders to be really, really energy draining because when you're pushing overhead, your entire body gets super, super, super tight, especially your neck. So your scalenes, your sternonucleomastoid, those muscles get super tight. When you're doing this a lot, those muscles are gonna shorten a bit and they're gonna pull on your neck. And sometimes that leads to headaches. So that leads to my next point. So you're gonna have to do some physio if you really want to increase your performance and keep your mind clear enough to perform at a certain academic level or threshold or whatnot. So I would use like lacrosse balls, foam rollers, make sure all my muscles were super, uh, I guess pliable, you know, stretched out properly. You don't want anything to get super tight because that will lead to not only, and so not only will this lead to fatigue and pain, but it will lead to poor performance as well. So what I just talked about was a little overview of what exactly getting a really great physique, what it requires. You know, when it requires quite a bit of your time, quite a bit of your energy, you just can't cas casually go into the gym after class and expect to make gains without a proper plan. So now I'm gonna talk a little bit about what getting an engineering degree requires. I'm not gonna go into the specifics of the different engineering degrees, mechanical versus civil versus aerospace, industrial, what have you. I'm just gonna talk about a general engineering degree. This could probably be STEM as well. So again, the number one most important thing for students to succeed, especially myself, was sleep. You really have to get enough sleep, eight to nine hours. If you're working out on top of uh, studying really hard for exams, like you probably need at least 10, 11 hours of sleep within a 24 hour period, that's including naps. So most students are just in a state of perpetually being sleep deprived. So yeah, besides sleep, you're gonna want to study. For me, I was studying a minimum of probably 20 to 25 hours a week. I think that's for like 12, 12 credits. We're taking like 15 plus credits, which is pretty insane for an engineering. Like if you're taking 15 to 20 credits, I like you're not gonna have a lot of time for anything else, but you're probably gonna wanna study regardless around 20 to 30 hours a week, especially if you're aiming for around a 3.5 GPA. I always, I personally, I always aim for around at least, uh, I would love a 4.0, but I, like a 3.5 was honestly great enough for me. So that's what I shot for. It's also really demanding about engineering, especially at a really large research university like the one I attended is that Classes, especially on the quarter system, move so damn quickly. Like week one, you're studying, you know, F equals MA. And then like week three, you're studying rotating coordinate systems and you're tracking a ball that's spinning or something, you know, like, but you kind of see what I'm getting at. So evidently, if you decide to seriously build amazing physique and you really want to get good grades, there's really going to be like a conflict there. Like both require a lot of your time 
and a lot of your energy. Like working out, bodybuilding is like an hour, two hours a day is not something casual like backgammon, you know, or you know, I don't know, like ping pong or something. Like it's literally physically gonna drain you a lot, especially if you're really intensely applying yourself like you should be doing if you're trying to make substantial progress. Honestly, I was pretty boring on the weekends. I mostly just studied and worked out and maybe if I had some spare time, I'd read or watch Netflix or something, but I honestly just did not have a lot of, I honestly did not have a lot of spare time. If I wasn't, you know, working out or studying or just doing something like engineering related or a project, I was most likely napping. So my daily routine is I'd wake up at like probably seven or eight before my classes started, I would make all my food for the day. I wasn't a huge fan of meal prep. I still really am not. I like everything super fresh. So I'd make all my food in the morning. After that, I'd probably take the bus to campus, go to my classes. In between classes, I would most likely study or eat my food. Uh, after most of my classes, I would go to the gym and get a nice workout in. If I had a class after the gym, I would attend that. Then I would probably go home, make myself some food, take a nap, and then just do schoolwork for the rest of the day. And that would take like, by this time, it's probably like five, you know, four or 5 p.m. So I'd spend the rest of my time just studying, doing my homework. Honestly, on the weekends, I would not go out at all. I would just crash on a Friday. I would do my homework or I'd go to the library on like a Friday night, finish as much homework as I could. That was due Monday or Tuesday, you know, and then crash. Like on the weekends, I never did any bars, no clubs. So the question is, should you seriously pursue working out bodybuilding while pursuing a degree in STEM, specifically engineering? And my answer to that is absolutely. So if you wanna work out, get pretty serious results, and you want to do well in your engineering classes, STEM classes, it doesn't have to be STEM, but everyone knows for the most part, STEM is harder than you know business, liberal, art, liberal, yeah, liberal arts. I would do the following things. So the number one thing I would do is sleep, like literally, like have a set sleeping schedule. Like literally go to bed at the same time and wake up at the exact same time. This is something, like I, like I said, it's something I really struggle with. But if you know this part, you are 100% golden, but I know that 99.99% of the people that are watching this video will not figure out their sleep schedule because it's so tempting to bring your phone into your bed at night. I only recently started really applying my efforts toward improving my sleep schedule it is something that you have to you have to just you just have to experience enough pain uh and then you'll start to change that's basically how it was for me so the second tip i want to talk about is in regards to your workouts working out you have to work out intensely but you have to do it in a really smart way because you don't want to work out so much that you're so fatigued you're just mentally really not there and you just want to sleep and you start to hate your life you know so I advise if you wanna get sim similar results to what I did, I would probably work out a minimum of four times a week and I would only really intensely work out two of those days. And I'm all for really physically pushing yourself as hard as you can. I'm 100% for that. But you don't wanna physically push yourself X, Y, and Z amount of days in a row and then be so fatigued you really can't do anything else. Unless you're like a pro bodybuilder, then you really can't be doing that, especially if you're a STEM student. This is just right off the cuff here, but what I would do is I work out intensely, take a break, work out fairly intensely again, uh, moderately hard workout, take a break, a moderately intense workout. So yeah, only train really intensely two to three times per week. The other, you know, one to two times you're training. Don't go to the point where you're just dead, exhausted afterwards. Train to the point where it's like a seven, maybe eight out of 10 for intensity, like six, seven out of 10. Uh, the other workout sessions maybe ramped up to an eight or a nine. My last tip is one I could have really used is don't be a superhero. What I mean by this is try not to do everything and be the best at everything because you're just gonna fail short in all those areas. Maybe you won't fall short, but you'll definitely have inferior performance if you really try your best in every single one of those areas. And if you have certain maybe unrealistic expectations for yourself set, realistic expectations for uh, not only your gym progress, but your grades, your time. 
that's probably the most important thing to do here. So I'm gonna use myself as an example of what not to do for this last tip. So I was, I think it was my fall quarter, I can't remember, but I was doing a bodybuilding show. I was working two jobs. One of them was a mechanical engineering internship. And the other one was at Enterprise Rent-A-Car. I was a valet slash service technician there. I was also taking engineering classes and I thought I could just do well, uh, just do phenomenal at every single one of these things. And honestly, that was just kind of setting myself up for failure. My grades were like fairly mediocre. Uh, from bodybuilding show, I did, honestly, I usually, I, I did well, but I know I could have done better if I had focused more on my bodybuilding. Uh, at my work, I was practically, I wanna say falling, like I'd fall asleep at my job all the time at Enterprise, rent a car. At my internship, I sometimes be so exhausted, I couldn't really work on the problems they assigned me. And one really terrible thing happened, I was in my machine shop class and I was basically falling into a little micro nap because I was so exhausted every single day. Like I, I'd basically be there and I was not entirely sure what was going on around me. Like, I mean, not like I didn't know what was going around me, but I was so exhausted, I would just be like, okay, where the fuck am I? Well, I was doing all those things. I wasn't super happy. I was, I would say I was happy in this, I might've been a little happy in the sense that I was accomplishing a lot. However, I was miserable in the sense that I wasn't getting a lot of sleep. I was stressed out all the time about not only my degree, my show, what I was eating, both my jobs, performing well at both my jobs. I was just super, super miserable. And I started to dislike uh, not only working out, but I started just like learning academics. Like it was just a whole really messy situation. Just don't do this. Engineering is hard all by itself. Just honestly focus on your degree and pick one other thing you're going to focus on. Cause I believe you do have enough time for engineering and a hobby, a passion you can get good at. For me, it was working out anyway. So yeah, I think that's about it for this video. Basically you can do engineering. You can do bodybuilding. You just have to really do those two things at two things at the exclusion of most everything else. If you really want to do a, if you really want to perform exceptionally at both. So if you stayed with me this far, I highly encourage you to leave a like. Also, let me know if anyone wants any videos in engineering going forward. Please comment below. Let me know what you think of this video and any future, basically anything you want to see on this channel. Like what, what type of videos you guys want to see? Just comment below, let me know, and I will keep that in mind when making future videos.